According to an article in the Wall Street Journal, some teens believe they have rare mental health disorders because they're following all the social media trends that they're watching on TikTok. And in tonight's cover story, ABC 7's Megan Miller investigated the dangers of self-diagnosing. She's getting you more on ways you might be making yourself sick. Online, we have access to almost anything. But access to mental health treatment and diagnoses can be harder to get. It is true that people on TikTok like to say diagnosis is a privilege. Until recently, even talking about mental health could be considered taboo. There are so many people out there who haven't had, because of the culture, the upbringing, the community they live in, they haven't had open conversations about mental health. Doing it's not style. That's why Dr. Justin Pooter started utilizing YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. That's where the people are. As professionals, why aren't we there? Why aren't we making more helpful content on these platforms? He's a licensed psychologist and therapist with a Florida-based private practice. Obviously, I went to school for a really long time and have a lot of information that I try to help my clients with. But I was like, a lot of these things I talk about one-on-one -on -one with clients, I could make short videos. Under the handle A Modern Therapist, he has a lot of followers. I believe I'm at like 560,000 on TikTok. But so do some users who talk about mental health but aren't actually professionals. How many times do I need to tell you? Psychology says no such thing. And adding in a number that you made up does not make it better. Dr. Inna Konevsky is a psychology professor at San Diego Mesa College. Well, not actually being a therapist is pretty problematic as a source for making broad claims like this. She's on TikTok too and isn't afraid to squash claims she finds false. Studies have shown people that like to sleep in this position tend to be more in touch with their feelings. Really, studies have shown? Then you won't mind showing me the studies, would you? Except there aren't any. I already dealt with this exact nonsense. I sort of stumbled on the whole misinformation side of TikTok, where people would say things like psychology says this, or studies show that, as this is how you know you have this condition, or this is how you deal with it, when it's not really what the case is. On the other hand, she says it can be helpful when people share their struggles. It doesn't have to necessarily be one or the other, like you make something that somebody relates to, and you make something that's accurate. She's not surprised people are turning to TikTok for help and neither is FGCU's Dr. Elise Bartley. We are so excited that mental health is finally in the forefront of what we're talking about. That's probably the only good thing that has been brought into place because of COVID. However, we're also finding that people are diagnosing themselves. For example, she's had multiple clients who think they're bipolar. Less than 5% of the population meets the criteria for bipolar disorder. And she says it takes a lot more than a quick video to confirm. It's complicated when you get to the criteria, you'll see that they're all specifically listed. Dr. Bartley says Googling and scrolling for answers can cause anxiety itself. So it can actually make a lot of your presenting mental health issues worse. You got three looks. From Dr. Pooter's perspective, it's okay to get curious about yourself online. But if you are starting there, you just want to check for credibility. A lot of professionals, it's right there that they'll have it like in their link on the bio. And even though it can be harder to access, don't be afraid to seek help beyond the apps. I think it's real important for people to know nothing can replace sitting across from a mental health professional and really going through the details of your narrative and your specific symptoms. Megan Miller, ABC7. A TikTok spokesperson tells ABC7, quote, we care deeply about the well-being of our community, which is why we continue to invest in digital literacy education aimed at helping people evaluate and understand content they engage with online. We strongly encourage individuals to seek professional medical advice if they are in need of support.